Welcome back. All right, so I want to talk about the Dallas Stars. Hey, I talked about the Canucks today. I might as well talk about the Stars. And now the Stars have really turned things around. So right now they're on a six-game heater. They've been playing quite well. Now, where it starts is with a rather embarrassing loss when they lose 6-2 to two against the New Jersey Devils. Uh, they, they led 2-1 to one in the first period. Things looked like they were going well until they didn't. Ottinger saved 6 out of 10. He got replaced by Wedgwood, who saved 8 out of 10. And it really kind of underlined the issues that the Dallas Stars had had up until this point. I want to I want to point out Ottinger here. Ottinger at home has had his struggles 13-7-2 with an 886 save percentage. On the road, he's been better, 16-6-2 with a 9-11 save percentage. Now, I haven't seen the stats. I know at one point Dallas had the best road record in the NHL. They may still have that. Uh, they're definitely very good on the road. Uh, they're in the midst of a road trip right now, and uh, yeah, they've won every game on said road trip. Now, in wins, Ottinger has a 9.23 save percentage. In regulation losses, 8.44. So how Ottinger's playing has a lot to do with whether or not Dallas is going to win the game. If they lose in overtime, his save percentage is 9.04. And that's that would include shootout losses as well. So regulation wins, Ottinger tends to be excellent. So when we're looking forward to the playoffs, how Ottinger plays will dictate how far Dallas goes. Um, I've been an Ottinger fan for years, but I do get frustrated at times when I know he can play better than what he's showing out there. Now, Jamie Benn has had an amazing turnaround in March. In the month of February, 13 games, one goal, five assists, six points. And Jamie Benn at points this season has looked a little bit slower, and yeah, his career's winding down, and you know, all that kind of whisper stuff. Uh, then March, uh, so far 12 games, nine goals, 10 assists, 19 points. Um, that's that's pretty darn good. He's been on quite the streak lately, and it's just everything's clicking for him. And this is the thing with hockey, right, is that you can get a player who's had a really bad month. You flip the calendar, and suddenly they're really good. Uh, Stankoven has been remarkable for them since being called up in 16 games, 6 goals, 5 assists, 11 points. The scoring is not what it was to start off, which is fine. He has a plus 8. Again, plus minus, you, you can take that with a grain of salt, but I will say this. Stankoven's been good at both ends of the ice, and so even when he's not scoring, he's prominent. Uh, he's fast. He is a really, really solid piece for this team going forward. Uh, Wyatt Johnston's not on the board because I didn't have a lot of split sat stuff to get with Johnston. Johnston's been pretty consistent the whole way through, but the fact that Stankoven, Johnston are here, you got Haskinen on the blue line, you got Harley on the blue line, you got Ottinger in net, the future's pretty bright in Dallas. Uh, Robertson has had a turnaround. So Robertson's not going to get in the 40-goal range like last season. Uh, but in February, 13 games, 3 goals, 6 assists, 9 points. This month so far in March, 12 games, 7 goals, 10 assists for 17 points. So, yeah, Jason Robertson's had himself quite the month of March. It's been really, really strong for him. And so I, I would expect that... Robertson should be able to continue that. I feel like the Robertson we're getting in March is more of what we had expected from him through the whole season. You're not going to maintain that over an 82-game schedule, obviously, but Robertson's really got it going. Chris Tanev, I think, has been a net positive. 11 games, one goal, one assist, two points. He's a plus two with Dallas, so the stats are not the storyline, of course, with Tanev. I think defensively, it takes a while to figure out your new teammates. You've got a new system, new goaltender behind you, you've got new mates when you're going out there and playing on the defensive side of things. I think Tanev has been quite good over the last few games, and I think over this winning streak, he's been part of it. And I'll go through this winning streak as well. I just wanted to highlight individual players first. Joe Pavelski, the month of February, 12 games, 2 goals, 6 assists, 8 points. Those numbers are good. He's been better in March. 12 games, 4 goals, 7 assists, 11 points. So Pavelski continues to show he can produce at around a point per game, despite being around 40 years of age. So Good for him. Uh, the LA Kings was where this started, the winning streak. So they, they at home against LA, win 4-1. to one. Keeping in mind, the Kings are better on the road than at home. So that's impressive. And they led 3-0 after the first. The LA Kings being one of those teams that likes to grind the game down and, and, and keep it where there's very few opportunities. If you can get a lead on them like this, you can maintain it. And so it was nice to see them do that, and Wedgwood saved 27 out of 28. One of the storylines, too, with the goaltending in Dallas has been, at times, Wedgwood's been the better goaltender. The following game, they won 5-2. to two. This is a home game as well against the Coyotes. They trailed 1-0 after the first. Jake Ottinger ends up saving 23 out of 25 as they won that 1-5-2. 
Uh, then at home against the Penguins, they won 4-2. to They trailed in that one first. So one thing Dallas has shown throughout this run, it doesn't matter if they allow the first goal, they're able to come back and get it. So that's been key. Ottinger, 20 saves on 22 shots in that win over Pittsburgh. Against the Coyotes again, this time in Arizona, they win 4-2. to It was tied 1-1 after 1. Jake Ottinger, another good game, 26 saves on 28 shots. Then they go to San Jose. Now, it's weird, isn't it, that I would kind of grade the team by the game against San Jose, but they had the game where they won it in overtime. They never had a lead in it. The game where they won in a shootout, never had a lead in that one either. And they just looked mediocre against San Jose, which was frustrating personally. Uh, but they beat the Sharks in San Jose 6-3, to and they were up 2 to nothing after the first. Wedgwood saved 17 out of 20 in that one. Last night in Vancouver, they win 3-1. to That game was tied 1-1 after 2. Uh, Ottinger, 27 saves on 28 shots. So Ottinger's been really good throughout this run, and it reflects the fact that if, if it's a win, his save percentage is good. If it's a loss, not so much. Uh, the loss on this board being that, that game against the Devils, yeah, allowing four goals on 10 shots will hurt that save percentage. So currently Dallas is three points ahead of the Colorado Avalanche atop the division. Uh, Colorado has one game in hand. Uh, they are three points ahead of the Canucks for top spot in the West. So Dallas has the inside track on top spot in the West. Uh, they're one point behind the Rangers for first overall in the NHL. The Rangers have one game in hand. So odds are Rangers finish first, but I seem to remember a Dallas team that wore this jersey back in 99 having quite the run when they were up near the top of the standings. They might have been President's Trophy winners that year. So Dallas on quite the run, it feels like this might be the best run they've had, maybe since 99. And this might be a team that has a chance to win that second Stanley Cup in that franchise's history, which, believe me, I, I would be quite happy to see that. And this is part of the reason why I was so hard on them when they were playing some really mediocre hockey and, and losing against the really good teams in the league, whether it was Florida, Boston, whoever. Um, now it appears that they're starting to figure this out. Again, uh, the Canucks have had their own struggles lately, which I documented in a video, but Dallas has shown what they can do. And the rest of their schedule is not that daunting. So tomorrow they're in Seattle. So you go from Vancouver to Seattle. Not a big trip there. Uh, then they come home on Wednesday. They play against Edmonton. That should be a fascinating game right there. On Saturday, they're in Chicago. That's a winnable game. Uh, then on Sunday, they're at Colorado. <clears throat> so the problem is it's a winnable game in Chicago. You play Wedgwood there. Then you play Ottinger in Denver. But Denver on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, that's going to be a tough challenge. And that may very well decide who finishes first in the division, right? Because a three-point lead, Colorado with a game in hand, we assume they win that. That means it's a one-point difference, potentially going into that game with Colorado. That could be huge. Uh, the following Tuesday, they're at home against Buffalo. The following, And, and then on that Thursday, they're at home against Winnipeg. Uh, they finish up, actually, the last four games at home. Uh, they're against Seattle at home on the Saturday. And then they finish up on the Wednesday at home against St. Louis. So a nice break. Between the game on Se in, in, on Saturday at home against Seattle and then on Wednesday at home against St. Louis. Two teams below the playoff line. Teams they play above the playoff line. You got Edmonton here, Colorado here, Winnipeg here. So the schedule the rest of the way for Dallas is not overly difficult. This is one where I could see them winning six out of eight. I could absolutely see that being the case. And... This is a team that come playoff time could be really, really tough to beat. So it's nice to see them finally playing the way that I know they can. Uh, they've won eight of their last 10, right? And again, they've won six in a row. So there's that outside chance they win 10 in a row and I have to make a video on it and jinx the, jinx the guys. But at any rate, right now they're playing really, really well. And I will give Jamie Benn full credit. He's playing the best hockey he has in years. Uh, this, this is a player who looked like he was winding down his career in more of the twilight years. Uh, right now, not so much. Uh, he has looked really, really good, and he's been a key part of the positive turnaround we've seen with the Dallas Stars that has led them to six wins in a row. So I figured I'd make a video on this. I, I don't like to just make a video on a team that's had some struggles without making a video on a team that's doing well. The interesting thing being, the teams that are struggling always get more views than the teams that are doing well. Uh, the, the sad stories usually get more attention, but I wanted to give some attention to Dallas while I was at it and give them some credit. They've done really well. And uh, tomorrow night's power rankings, unless they lose big time against Seattle, and even if they do, they're moving up. So for Dallas fans, they're like, hey, he's always got them low. No, uh, they've, they've moved up a lot. I think they're finally playing the way that um, I was hoping they'd be playing earlier in the season. But hey, they're, they're getting into their playoff form now. 
And uh, it should be really interesting to see what happens, especially if LA does finish as that second wild card and uh, Dallas ends up being the number one team in the West. That could be a first round preview. And they've shown they can beat the LA Kings. So it'll be fascinating to see how that turns out. The playoffs are a very different beast than the regular season. I always have to have that asterisk. A team that figures out how to defeat a team in the regular season does not always figure out a way to do the same come postseason. But it should be fun. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And back in 1999 when they won that Stanley Cup, I was the only person in the room cheering. Whole bar full of people. I was the only one that cheered when that puck went in and they won the Stanley Cup. I'm ready to be the only one cheering if they win it again, um, at least locally. I know Dallas fans will be cheering, but there's not a ton of them locally. So at any rate, we'll see what happens. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support. And of course, if Dallas and, and Vancouver met in the conference final, there'll be a happy dance video for that. But uh, stay tuned. I, I don't know that it's going to happen. I'm not going to try to jinx it one way or the other. Uh, but it's been a very fun season for me to watch hockey. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.